Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to build a data service. With data services, you can publish data transformations as API endpoints. And you do so by designing a new type of a data service job that you can publish on Clover Retail server. And then the server takes care of making that API available. So let me show you how to do it. I have an example here. This takes raw contacts and cleans it and enriches it with our company database. And I want to share this logic with my colleagues and they don't necessarily work in Clover, but I want to have that logic in one place. So I'll turn this into, a NP, into an API that they can use from their applications. I'll start by turning this into a subgraph. And the reason why I'm using a subgraph is because whenever there's some shared logic, I like to have it in one place. So let's call this context enrichment. <clears throat> and now with the subgraph, I can create a new data service. You'll find it in the new data service rest job. I'll call it contact enrichment. And as you can see, it's similar to a subgraph, but in this case, the input represents the HTTP request and the output represents the HTTP response. So let me remove this template here and let me put the subgraph uh, as a starting point. So I need <clears throat> now I need to hook the input to the HTTP request and the output to the uh, HTTP response. With the output, it's fairly simple. I can hook it here to this output bar, and then later I'll configure what the what the data service should do with the with the data. With the input, it's a bit more tricky. Uh, currently, Clover doesn't support uh, hooking data directly from the input, and also what I want this service to be used in is an, a test application that I designed, which is. <clears throat> a single simple HTML page uh, that uh, I'm going to share with my colleagues and they can upload Excel files and then they will get enriched Excel files back. So in this case, I need to read an Excel. So what I'll do is I'll use standard spreadsheet data reader and I'll configure it to read data, data not from a file, but from the HTTP request. And I'll do so by going to a uh, file URL dialog and switching to this new ta tab, which is called HTTP context. In here, I have two options. One is to read the full body as, as a single street binary stream, or if it's a multi-part content type, I can read individual parts. And that's the case of my application because this is a standard HTML form and it uses this uh, multi-part form data content type. So I'm going to use request part and also I need to specify the part I'm interested in. In my case, it's called data file. And if you wonder where this data file comes from, when I switch to the source code of this page and scroll down to where the file is, you can see it's uh, a simple file input and the name of that is data file. So there's no magic in there. So now with this spreadsheet data reader configured, I have my input sorted and I'll, I'll need to do something with the output. For that, I'll switch to endpoint configuration. This is where I configure the API endpoint. And I'm still doing this in designer and later on I'll publish it to the Clover ETL server. So on this page, I can set some basic configuration for this, for this service. I'll label it contact enrichment. This is mostly for like cataloging and also later on we'll see the documentation for this uh, web service. And this is gonna be quite useful. The second thing I can configure is where this uh, API will live. Uh, it's a subset of Clover Retail Service API, but I can choose this as I want. But I'll leave it as it is. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. The next thing I need to set is the method. And since this is uh, an HTML form that sends a file, I need to use post. So I'll switch it to post. I don't need get. 
so that's fine here. Uh, the next thing I need to configure is the output. And I'll leave it uh, to the default JSON now. Uh, this means the data service will take care of serializing the output data that come from this subgraph into a standard format JSON that you can see an example here. Uh, later on, I'll switch this to file option, which allows me to send the Excel data as, as I want from, from my application. But for now, I'll leave it to JSON. I can use uh, input parameters. Uh, I can create a bunch of parameters that I uh, either pass as a query parameter, the question mark and key equals value, or I can have parameters as part of my path. So it would be if it was a service for a single contact, it would have like the contact ID here or something, and this would be the parameter. In the transformation, I can treat the parameters e either as data or I can use them from within CTL. If I want to use them as data, uh, I simply hook this parameters input and I'll show you just using a trash. And when I click this, you see I have metadata that are the same as the parameters that I defined and I can use these. So for example, those IDs and stuff. Uh, and also using CTL, I can use uh, parameters as part of like reformat transformation or, or whatever. But in, in this example, I'm not going to use this. Uh, I'm not going to use parameters at all. So I'll get rid of these for now. Uh, when you scroll down, there's a section for documentation. And this is quite useful when you have more services that you share with uh, your colleagues, uh, because obviously it's good to describe what you're doing. So let's call it like this. And you'll see this uh, on the server when we get there. So now I'm done configuring this uh, data service. I'll save it. It lives as a, as a job in my project. Uh, right next to my graphs and everything else. What I'll do now is I'll publish it. So when I publish a job, it contacts, uh, the designer contacts the server and sends this job to the server and the server makes it available on this URL. So to check that, I can go to my server console And I can show you the new data services module. And as you can see, this contact enrichment is now visible here. It hasn't been executed yet. And when I click this, I can see some overview. I can see where it sits. I can also access its documentation. And this is quite useful if you want to share it with some with some no, someone who doesn't have access to the server. And this is a standard auto-generated documentation that takes uh, information that you've entered in that end endpoint configuration. You can test it, you can see what parameters it takes, and so on. So this is quite useful when you want to share it uh, with someone. Uh, you can also get a Swagger file uh, if you want to use this API as part of some uh, broader API ecosystem. What I need to do next is uh, I need to set the right authentication. And I can choose between basic, this is your HTTP basic authentication, or no authentication at all, basically making an, a public API, uh, which is what I want for this case, because I don't want to deal with logins uh, in my simple, hang on, uh, in my simple application here. So I'll switch it to do not require authentication, and then I need to choose which user this will run under. So I'll use the standard Clover for now. Uh, what I can also do is I can set some alerts and notifications, and that's quite useful if you want to monitor what's going on with your data services. You can either set it to uh, send you an email notification every time uh, the job fails, or for like high traffic services, you might want to set some thresholds. So you don't want to uh, be informed about every single failure, but you want to set some uh, cr 
limits and whenever the limit is exceeded then you start getting these notifications so it's that's quite useful i'm not going to use it for this example so i'll leave it as it is uh, and this basically is the whole configuration I, I need to do now i can test my uh, html application so what i'll need to do is i'll need to set the url uh, into this form so let me get this URL here and I'll go to the source code of this HTML page and I'll put it here. So this is the data service that I'm going to be using. Uh, this form uses post and the, that multi part that we talked about earlier. So let's let me save that and refresh this page and let's see if it works. So what I have here is a test data. It's a simple uh, Excel, uh, similar to what the one we had in the graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to the form and click Enrich. And what happens is this form sends it to the data service. The data service uh, runs that subgraph, and now I'm getting the JSON results back. And as you can see, it's the company information enriched with some data from our database so the last thing i need to do is i need to switch it to an excel right because we don't want our users to use JSONs. so what i'll need to do i'll need to go back to designer and i'll need to switch this output format from the standard json to a file and this allows me to generate an excel file in the transformation we'll set it later and then the data service will pick that file and send it as data payload uh, with the http response so my file is going to be labeled enriched contacts xlsx all right so i'm gonna be using this uh, i'll choose the content type to be uh, Microsoft Office XML and I'll set it, set it to attachment so that the browser will not try to show it but it will give me the download option so let me save this and the last thing I need to do is I need to redesign this job so that it no longer hooks to this output but instead I'll be producing that file so let me move this a little bit uh, and let's put a spreadsheet data writer here and unlike the reader in this writer all i need to do is create that file i'm not using the http context i'm just creating the file and i actually copied the uh, uh, the file name so i'm gonna use this uh, let's call this contacts and let's switch it to create new file all right so now i have the transformation that takes excel data from the uh, http request reads it runs it through the enrichment process and then produces a, a simple excel file and the data service will pick up the excel file and send it back to our users so let's see how it works so i'll go back I have the file again the same file and I click the enrich file button and this time I'm getting this attachment which is an Excel and as you can see my data is neatly organized in an Excel and that's that's all all you need to do is go to designer design a transformation within a new data service job set some endpoint, endpoint configuration and then publish it to the server and by the way you can check on the server uh, what's the performance of the data service 